which was around six years ago. And the one in the middle was the one that I got three years after, but they were both released in the same year. And that was a computer I used regularly um, last year. And the one on the far right was the one I built this summer and is the one I'm currently using. Right here is my current PC that I built. Right here is the graphics card that I'm using. It is a GTX 1660. We have two red LED fans in the front. We have two um, RAM sticks, four gigs, running at 3000 megahertz. And we have our CPU fan, which is a top of our CPU, which is a Ryzen 5 2600. And we have another red LED fan right here. And I'll show you my uh, old ones. Uh, they're not fully assembled because I took them apart for their parts, but we have our original one here. CPU has been completely taken out here. We can see the motherboard is quite small and is blue. And here we have our one from last year, which shows a green motherboard and our CPU fan there on top of our GPU. And CPU for this one right here, which was the first one, is a i3-4130 and had a 8 gigs of RAM. Not nearly as fast as my computer I'm using. It was at like 1300 megahertz. And here we have our newer one that I had last year. It is a i5-2390T and had basically the same RAM, 8 gigs, and about the same uh, speed. Um, originally, I thought this would be a lot better considering it was an i5, but it's actually quite worse because it is power efficient, so it is quite a bit worse than the i3. Um, so now I'm going to show you some benchmarks of how exactly they compete with one another. So right in front of me, I have the two CPUs that I used in my old uh, computer. So the one on the right is my first ever computer CPU, and it is a Core i3-4130, two cores, four threads, and on the left I have my Core i5-2390T, which is two cores and four threads. And you can tell on the right it has a much higher clock speed than the 2390T of 3.4 versus 2.7 gigahertz, and that will impact it greatly, bring down its performance. So you can actually see it's about a 10% increase about from the two CPUs. So right here I have my current processor, which is a Ryzen 5 2600 versus my first computer's i3-4130. And we can see it is 87% faster, which is an insane increase. And it has 6 cores and 12 threads compared to its 2 cores and 4 threads. But its speed is only 0.2 faster. And you can actually see, compared to its uh, gaming and uh, workstation, it's a 75 compared to a 40, uh, 71 desktop compared to a 50, and it, like a 65 workstation compared to a 25. So you can see that the, uh, the Ryzen 5 2600 is more suited for gaming and desktop use and workstation than the i3-4130, and that is one of the reasons why I upgraded. Um, and then when you compare it to the i5-2390T, it's similar, but... It is 134% faster, and it's 20% compared to the semi, which is a big increase. Uh, so right here we have Cinebench, which is a platform you use to test the CPU, and we're going to test it. And as you can see by the end result, it is slightly worse, a couple hundred than my current test I did before, of about 2300. Now if I were to use an older CPU that I had, it would be around 300 or 400. You can see by uh, that number, you can see how much better this Ryzen 5 is uh, than my other CPUs and how much of a workstation it is compared to my other past two. All right, so right here we have one of the games that we're going to be testing, and that is going to be Ark Survival Evolved, which is a dinosaur survival game. So right here we're using our GTX 1660, which is the card I'm currently using, and as you can see, the graphics are stunningly beautiful and very realistic. <clears throat> and it looks very nice. You can see all the details and the trees, the lights, the flaring of the sun, the shadows. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you what it will look like if I was using my RX 560. So I'll be right back once I do. Alright, so we are back. So this is what it will look like on an RX 560. Now, 
this is medium, <coughs> so it's not as much detail, but it's still pretty good. Like, the reflections aren't as vibrant, <coughs> but, you know, it's still pretty good. The RX 560 is still a pretty capable card. It's not terrible. So, the next one I'm going to show you is what you would expect to see if you were running this on, like, an integrated graphics, like the Intel HD 2000, which was the first one I used on my pre-belt. So, I'll be right back once I show you what that'll look like. Alright, so we're back, and this is what it looked like on a Intel HD computer. Uh, as you can see, there's no blooms. Everything is just a <clears throat> kind of like a dry color. There's no real details. No lighting. It's very sort of pixelated. Everything just looks like a barren desert. Um, so yeah, and now I'm actually going to show you. Now I'm going to show you the cards on a competitor for all games. So I'll be right back once I uh, do that. Alright, so we're back, <clears throat> and this is the benchmark to see the difference between the GTX 1660 and the RX 560. So, by the way, these prices are actually a little bit off. 1660s usually go for 230 to 260 depending on the model, and the RX 560 is much cheaper than that. Now, on Amazon, they're about... 80 bucks, but that's not really worth it. You can get them like 50 to 60 used because they're quite old. And you can see that <coughs> 1660 gets quite a bit better in FPS, above 60 to about 60. RX 560 gets around 40 to 50. So, yeah, the RX 560 is a good card if you want to get into 1080p gaming. I wrote around 40 to 50 FPS, and if you want 1660, you're going to get around, you know, 70, 60, over 100, depending on the game. Yeah, and those are the rankings out of 100, so you can see it's a third of the performance of the 1660.